I want to talk about this because uh, Wednesday, what's today, the 25th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. on, Wednesday, uh, on Tuesday, there was an anniversary, a very uh, sad anniversary, I should say, of the authoring of a memo I have here in my hand. Confidential Memor Memorandum, Attack of American Free Enterprise System. To Eugene B. Snyder, Chairman, Education Committee of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Now, back in 1971, when this uh, memo was written, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce was like that old-fashioned idea of the Chamber of Commerce. Hey, Mr. Crabtree, we should have a celebration of the, of the town's businesses to help drive business to downtown. Well, okay, I will. I'm going to bring this up at the next meeting of the of the town chamber of commerce, and we'll all get together and help the businesses out, so that we can have a thriving downtown area. Well, that's the way the U.S. Chamber of Commerce was back in the day. But this guy, Lewis Powell, who at the time was an attorney from Richmond, Virginia, wrote this memo. He was writing about what he perceived an attack on business. He said it was an attack on the American free enterprise uh, system. Now, this is a guy who is a board member of Philip Morris and other companies. And he wrote this memo. It's massive. We've linked to it on uh, Majority FM, as we will the uh, NYPD story. He wrote this massive memo with the premise that the attack on corporate America uh, was not just coming from the dirty hippies. Not, as he wrote, from few extremists of the left, but also, and most alarmingly, from, quote, perfectly respectable elements of society including leading intellectuals, the media, and politicians. Remember, this is a time where you had the greatest expansion of the middle class in the history of this country. And their economic security was giving them the confidence to act in the political arena. And so you had people coming out for civil rights, for uh, anti-war measures, for increased um, uh, pensions and health, women's rights, basically the whole spectrum of human rights for African Americans to get a vote, for women to get equal pay, for the environment in particular. Remember this date, 1973. This is just... Uh, Months, well, year, a year or two after uh, Nixon, yes, Richard Nixon signed the Environmental Policy Act in January of 1970. It was followed up within a year or so uh, with the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency. Prior to 1970, there was no laws about pol uh, pollution. The Clean Air Act was, uh, was instituted in December 19, uh, 1970. In, uh, in April 1971, there was the first air pollution standards. Suddenly, you weren't allowed to dump crap into the water if you were a corporation. You couldn't uh, use lead paint because it was making uh, kids who were exposed to the, uh, the, this lead it was creating birth defects. Uh, it was uh, hurting their mental cap uh, capacities. Raised the awareness of like pesticides and other pollutants. DDT was banned in 1972. So you've got businesses saying like, holy crap, our ability to offload the expense of using these uh, products onto the public, we're not going to be able to do that anymore. You understand the dynamic here, right? They don't include in the cost of their production of things, things like cleanup. That expense is borne by all of us in the form of asthma, brain uh, malfunction, birth defects, 
death. And he wrote, since business executives have little stomach for hard-nosed contest with their critics and little skill in effective intellectual and philosophical debate, in other words, politics, it was important to create new think tanks, legal foundations, front groups, and other organizations. Quote, careful long-range planning and implementation and consistency of action over an indefinite period of years in the scale of financing available only through joint effort and in the political power available only through united action and united organizations. This memo did not become publicly available until after Richard Nixon appointed Powell to the Supreme Court of the United States. After the report was unleashed, a task force of 40 business executives reviewed Powell's memo and drafted a list of specific proposals to, quote, improve understanding of businesses and the private enterprise system. This was adopted in 1973 in November. Powell's memo this is according to a piece written by Charlie Cray uh, from Greenpeace, and we'll link to this, is widely credited for having helped catalyze a new business activist movement with numerous conservative family and corporate foundations, the Coors, the Olin, Bradley, Scaife, Koch, and others, everything that we have talked about on this program for seven years, starting uh, with the original Majority Report. This is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name off some, uh, uh, some agencies that were, or agencies, some uh, uh, institutions, some outfits that were developed in the short year and a half, two years following this memo. The Business Roundtable, 1972. The American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, 1973. The Heritage Foundation, 1973. The Cato Institute, 1977. The Manhattan Institute, 1978. Citizens for a, uh, a Sound Economy, 1984. You know them now as Americans for Prosperity. The Powell memo, folks, if you want to know what the conservative movement has been doing for the past 40 years now, read the Powell memo and you will find out. <laughs>